Hi, my name is Nico Na. I've been in the lettering business since 2014, designing for clients, creating my own lettering products, both analog and digital, and traveling the world to teach workshops. Today, I'm excited to share my process and top lettering tips so that you can create stunning lettering designs too. Lettering composition is more than just drawing letters. It's about planning and bringing different lettering styles and design elements together into a strong layout that visually captures attention. If this is your first time trying lettering, or if you tried it before, but you want to improve, you're in the right place. I'll walk you through the process I've followed for years, teaching you my methods and tips in this free workshop. For each step, I've provided extra guides and worksheets to help you. The lettering prompts and layout templates, lettering style combination cards, letter design and effects cheat sheet, decorations guide, and color palette inspirations. Every step of the process is essential for creating a stunning lettering piece. I'm sharing these resources so you'll have everything you need to continue creating beautiful works even after this workshop. If you don't have the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit, you can download it for free. The link is in the description below. For this workshop, I'll be demonstrating my process digitally on my iPad. If you want to learn my analog process, I have another video for that, also linked in the description. I'll be using my favorite brushes on Procreate, but feel free to use any drawing brushes you have. You can find the packs I'm using in the description below. Let's get started with the first of the six necessary steps to create stunning lettering designs. Step number one, planning. When creating a lettering piece, it's best to start with a plan. This helps you avoid mistakes that could cause frustrations and take time to fix later. It also prevents you from adding elements that don't work well together. Here, I have a quick sketch of my quote and layout plan. It's helpful to sketch a few options before picking the best one to work on. To create more dynamic layouts, consider incorporating different shapes like arc, slopes, wave, or semi-circles. If you have the Composition Ruler template or the Composition Ruler design kit for Procreate, you can check the shapes included for more ideas on how to sketch your composition. Step number two, composition guides. Sketching a layout guide before drawing letters is crucial. It helps you avoid messy layouts, weird word sizing and spacing, or missing words. We'll use one of the templates from the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit but let me show you how to create your guides manually just in case you want to customize your own layout design. Here's a quick process for creating my guides from scratch. I move and scale my sketch to the center, then stamp the top and bottom shape guides for each word on separate layers. Arrange them following my sketch. Use the guide markings to close the shape and erase excess sketches before drawing. For analog lettering, you can use the composition ruler to sketch your guides easily. Remember, the link to the full analog process is in the description. Now let's import our composition template and start sketching. I'm going to hold the composition guide one and click copy then go to Procreate, and then paste it to our canvas, like that. I kind of want to increase the size a bit, but before that, I just want to cut out all the other details. So I'm using Selection Tool. I'm selecting everything up until the top and bottom vertical guide, and then I'm using three fingers to clear. 
like that. And then I just want to increase the size a little bit and center it like that. Perfect. Let me just bring the opacity down a bit because I find it too distracting if it's too dark. Like that. Perfect. So here we're going to add the word make. Here we're going to add today. Here we're going to add truly. And here we're going to add special. Step number three, letter sketching. Next, we need to carefully sketch our letters, ensuring they're consistent, correctly drawn, and nicely spaced. These details will help your work stand out and differentiate it from beginner level pieces. Before sketching our letters, let's choose the learning styles for our words. Picking styles that complement each other is crucial. It can make or break your design. I usually create with just a few simple styles. You can find style combinations on the combination style cards included in the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit. So you have the first combination. You could combine both wedge serif and mono weight serif like this. It's going to look something like this. And then you have the details for the styles right here on how to draw the serifs and how thick and thin or how much the contrast is for this style. For the second combination, you could choose to combine a modern script and a hairline serif like that. Again, you have the styles here, the descriptions on how to draw the styles. And then for the third combination, you can use slab serif and sans serif design like this. They pair perfectly well together. And here are the details of slab serif and sans serif. So I think I'm going to go for the second lettering style combination, which is modern script and hairline serif. But for my personal style and my personal preference, I kind of want to wedge the serif out. But it's up to you if you want to follow this as is, or if you want to make some changes, like what I'm going to do with this. So if you need to remember, or if you want like a copy of this on your canvas, you could just import that as well under PNG style combination two. Let's hold that, click copy. Let's go back to Procreate and then just paste it right here just so that you have a reference but for me i'm going to wedge this out so i'm just going to make hairline serif and then just curve out the serifs like that but it's still going to look the same just slightly different there but if you can remember or you are familiar with these two styles you don't need to import that now we're going to sketch in our letters, but before we start, I just want to share something real quick. For digital lettering, I use letter spacers to help me maintain the correct widths. Then I slide them close together to control the spacing, which saves me time on corrections later. And to keep my letters thicknesses consistent, I use wig guides. By adding these guides before sketching, I have a visual reference for how thick to draw the parts of my letters. In digital, I use wood brushes. For analog, I use the grid ruler or the letter ruler. I'll show everything as I go along with the process. So we now have the letter guides done. And as you can see, we've already like sized them and spaced them properly. 
But before we trace over them with our final ink, our final design, another thing we need to take note of is the weight, right? We want them to have the consistent thickness, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add weight guides. So what are weight guides? Weight guards basically are just like, just brush in consistent thickness or just dot in a consistent thickness so that when we're going to draw our letters later, we're going to use them as guide, which I'm going to show you just in a bit. So for the word make, oh, maybe let's just combine everything. Like this. So all of our guides are in uh, there. So let's bring the opacity down like that. And then let's create a new layer. And then you could just, and then I'm going to use the weight brush of my composition ruler design kit pack, but you can use any brush that you want or any brush that you have. So we now have the weight guys right here. So for the weight guys, you can also do it for the thin parts. But for me, I'm just going to use my eye to do the thin parts. So can now bring the opacity down a little bit. Okay. Okay, now you see that you have your layout guides in dot. You have your letter guides. And you have your weight guides. So we're going to use all of those three guides combined to draw our letters. The reason why you want all of those guides before we start drawing, rather than draw everything and then keep on adjusting it, is because with Procreate, if you resize or if you yeah, if you resize, squish, stretch, you're going to lose that sharpness in your letter. So you're gonna see that the edges of your letters are going to be blurry and blurry and blurry the more you move things around. And that's why to keep the high-res quality of your work, you want to make sure that you set the guys and then you just draw them after. And then you don't keep on, like, you don't keep on resizing, squishing, and rotating things later on. Yeah. So now I'm going to get my brush. You could use any brush that you want. What I'm using is the detailed brush of my layering composition brush pack and then on a new layer let's start to draw our letters So let's fill that in. Selection on automatic. Let's select the outside. You can play with the threshold. Make sure you select the area. Don't select this. You want to select just the outside of the letters. Like that. So this, this, this. Invert. And we're going to go to our shading brush. Right, fill brush. Uh, there. So as you can see, by setting up the guides, we don't need to make a lot of extra adjustments, right? And we don't need to make a lot of erasures, right? So if you want to make some adjustments in terms of spacing of the words, feel free to do that. It's okay if you didn't get the spacing perfectly. 
is because you only had sketches earlier. But now this is the actual finished ink letters. And you may and you might have done like some adjustments while inking that maybe affected the layout design. So feel free to make any adjustments like the word special. I want to bring it down just a little bit so that it's not touching the word truly too much. So I'm making sure magnetics is turned on. So I could lock it to the vertical movement right here. Just a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. I think I'm happy with this. So once that's done, we'll have a nice plain lettering piece with a strong composition. Nice and balanced. When working digitally, I usually color my artwork afterwards, allowing me to focus on one step at a time. If you're working on paper, you can ink your letters in your chosen color combinations. Step four, letter designs. Now for the fun part, designing and decorating your lettering. Keep in mind that design should enhance your letters, making them pop without compromising readability. You can add simple or complex inline designs and depth effects outside the letters. For inspiration, check the letter design and effect cheat sheet from the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit. So here we have the cheat sheet. So here are some shadow designs or designs or effects you could add outside of your letters. And below you have inline designs like this. So I think for the shadows, I'm just going to keep it simple. Line shadow will do. And then for the inline designs, I think modulated inline. So this is a simple inline, but you have, you started with a thin to thick and then thin again. So yeah, I think we're going to use line shadow and modulated inline. And then as we go, we might want to design this up like this one instead of a straight line or like a simple line maybe include like a circle or like a dot in the center we'll see as we go but for now the plan is to add line shadow and modulate it in line if you're sketching on paper and want to add designs over your letters i recommend using opaque ink markers for visibility like these posca markers wow. Okay, let's add a new layer on top. Okay. And then add the inline first. So for the inline, I can also use the same detail brush, but change to white. So start with thin, thick, and back to thin again. Like that. Zoom it out, see if it's visible. Yeah, I think that's visible. Now let's add the line shadow. To make a quick line shadow guide, we can simply duplicate all of the layers. So I'm just going to do this real quick by selecting them and then dragging them to the center. That way I get the duplicate. Then I just move them down below like that, merge the duplicates, bring the opacity down. So when I move it, I'm going to see it. Yeah, so I'm going to lock it at 135. So it's going to be 45 degrees there. 
And then on the new layer, switch to black. And then let's just draw. We are done. So before we added our designs, it looked like this. After adding the inline designs and the line shadow, we have something like this, which looks way more interesting. Step number five, letter decorations. After designing your letters, let's finish our composition with decorations around the lettering to make your work stand out even more. Refer to the decorations guide in the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit to pick a decorations file. To avoid chaos or clutter, use decoration guides like a silhouette of an interesting shape to confine your decorations. A simple circle or more specific shapes work well. I have a selection of frame stamps, silhouette shapes, and foliage guide in my mega floral composition kit. So here is the guide. First option is to draw leaves around your lettering, which looks really, really nice. And here you have some instructions. You start with a leaf structure. And here are some examples of leaf illustrations that you can add to your work. And the second page of the guide has some simple steps that you can follow. So the second one is an easier one, rays and sparkles. I really, really like this, especially if my lettering is a bit packed because having like a very compressed lettering, you might want to give it a more airy or a breathe more breathable decoration. So I think rays and sparkles is a nice way to decorate. We have some instructions here, like start with a silhouette guide and draw the rays. Yeah, you could just refer to this. And you could also do ornamental swirls, something more complex like this. So basically, you also have like a silhouette guide and use different swirls, simple swirls, compound swirls, and leaf ornaments. So it's up to you how you want to decorate your piece. But for me, I want to stick to the simple because I feel like this breathy, airy sparkle ray design will work better for this composition. So let's start. Earlier I said that it's going to be easier to add some sort of silhouette to keep all of our decorations more organized. So it's up to you if you want to like draw maybe like some oh something cleaner. So like this, maybe like an apple shape. And then you could just duplicate to the other side, flip it like that, center it, and just fill the oops, fill the inside like that. Bring the opacity down, 
So you now have like your silhouette guide so that when you add your decorations later, it's going to be super nice and clean. But if you have the decorations pack or my floral decorations pack, I'm just going to show you one of the silhouettes. So maybe this shield decor guide. Yeah, you have some frame. If you want to put the decoration outside, but I think it's not going to work with rays and sparkles. So we're going to go to the silhouette and pick like a shape that we want. I think this shield decor looks nice, but feel free to like adjust it. So let's just center this first and try to adjust the shape so that it's going to fit better with our design. I think this looks nice. There. So we now have our little shape, which is super easy. Now that we have the shape, we can now start to draw in our sparkles. So if you come back here, as you can see, you can mix different designs of sparkles. Like for this one, actually this one, you have this six pointed sparkles and then you have these point four pointed sparkles, but one is like thinner, one's like more filled. So feel free to mix in different styles to make your design look more interesting. So you can just draw them on like well, something nicer. Like draw straight lines like this and a horizontal line like this. Then just curve everything like that. And that then fill it in. Or what you can do is Draw something like this, a curve like that, duplicate that, flip it horizontal, move it until you close them together, merge them, duplicate, transform, flip vertical, bring it down there. You now have a sparkle. So we could do that. Let me erase that. Or if you have any sparkle stamps, which is going to make the process so much easier. So I have some sparkle stamps on my retro pack. This one, yeah. And then just size it however you want. And then just stamp a little bit of it. Like that. And then let's switch to a different sparkle. Like that. So when I remove my guide, as you can see, the sparkles are in a nice and clean design. Now to add the race. Before that, I just want to like center everything. This is just my personal preference. You don't need to center everything. That's just me. Or maybe I'll just move, oops, using rectangle. I'll just move one of the elements it to the side so that when I center it, it's not going to move too much. Yeah, there. Anyway, so to draw a race, you want them pointing towards the center, right? So here's a quick hack to do that. Just duplicate and then using the bottom part, go to perspective blur and go to maximum. Looks like Perspective blur, maximum again, just do it several times. There. And you can just re oops, sorry, on uniform, just put it down. Okay. Maybe pop a little bit. There. So you now have like the pathway guide right here because it's important for race to have like the correct direction. Okay. So when we long did that, bring the opacity down a little bit and on a new layer, we're going to draw the race manually. Okay. So going back to our drawing brush. So I'm going to use the pencil brush so that it's going to be thinner. 
And from there, just draw the race following the direction. So like this one. Okay, I think we start all the way here. So thin to thick. So I'm just following the direction. There you have it, our decorated letters. So as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, since our words are a bit more compact, it's nice to give a very breathable decoration design like this. Step number six, coloring. Now that we have all our elements on the canvas, let's start coloring. Keeping your lettering, design, and decorations in separate layers will make the coloring process easier. Pick a color palette from the Color Palette Inspiration in the All-in-One Lettering Style and Composition Kit for ideas. Coloring your lettering differs from coloring drawings or illustration. We want our words to stand out, like this one. That's why the Coloring Palette Inspiration Sheet categorizes lettering, background and decorations for designs because even with a nice palette the wrong color assignments can lead to an impressive results so aim for a high contrast between the lettering and the background and color the decorations in mid-tones for a balanced look so here we have four options this is the golden midnight color palette this one is the pink autumn palette which is really nice this is bright greenery and cool summer. As you can see for this color palette, you already have the instructions like for lettering, use these colors for background, this one, the creations, these colors. But of course, it really depends on the designs that you're using. So sometimes you might need to adjust the colors a little bit to work for the specific elements of your lettering composition. So. I think for this one, I'm going to use Golden Midnight because I really like the dark blue background and a white lettering. So let's import that. We don't need to import the entire page because we have PNGs right here. So it's color palette one, right? So hold that. Click copy. We could switch back to Procreate. And then, whoops, let's go to the topmost layer. So that when we paste, at add paste, allow paste. It's going to put it at the topmost layer. Okay. So for this one, let's just move it up. We're going to crop it. For this one, I think we could just make this really small and put it at the corner. There. So let's start coloring. You start with the background. So for the background, it's this color. Let's color pick that. So I'm just using my finger to hold and press, I mean, press and hold, so I'm going to get that color. And then at the bottom layer, I'm going to create a new layer or like the base layer of uh, our final design because we have a lot of sketches right there. So I'm just going to create a new layer and drag that in. Now it's completely black. Next is for the lettering. For the lettering, I'm going to color pick this one, which is going to be the color for our letters. So. Let's find the words, the layers for the words. It's this, 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 and this. And I think we can just go ahead and merge, whoops, 
merge all of these together because we're going to colors in the same color. So turn on alpha lock and then click on fill layer. There you have. So if you feel like there's too much texture there, if you want to refine it a bit, simply just duplicate the layer. And there you go. So this is before and after. There. You still get that some like manual shading effect. And then one last thing, just add a layer to just finish everything. So I'm just going to create a new layer right below the lettering layer and select, let's just select white first. And then let's look for any texture that you want. So let's check my retro pack. I think I have some nice light smudges. Oh, sandy paper texture. So pressure, ooh, that looks nice. But I want to change it to black invert. There. So before and after. Let me duplicate this a couple of times. So that it's going to be more visible. But I'm going to brighten the background just a little bit. before and after that. Yeah. There you go. I think this looks perfect. Oh, let me just remove the one texture layer. Yeah. Make today truly special. Beautiful reminder for each and every day. And there you have it. A beautiful lettering artwork. Having these resources at hand allows you to start creating immediately. It can be counterproductive to spend too much time searching for inspiration on platforms like Pinterest, where you can't get overwhelmed. Instead, use that time to create and enjoy the process with these guide sheets. Now that we have a letter piece to be proud of, I want to leave you with a challenge. Lettering is all about practice, smart practice. It's a continuous journey of exploration and improvement. That is why I invite you to participate in the Lettering Layout Challenge. Inside the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit, you'll find more prompts with layout guides. Use them along with the styles, designs, decorations, and color guides to create more stunning lettering art. If you have time, aim to create one piece every day starting tomorrow while the tips are still fresh in your mind. If your week is busy, commit to finishing one lettering composition each week. Set a deadline like Saturday to track your progress and improve your skills while enjoying the joy of creating. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section. If you haven't downloaded the all-in-one lettering style and composition kit for free, the link is in the description. Like this video and share one key lesson or tip you learned from the workshop in the comments. I've also included all the tools and brushes I used in the description. I'm excited for you as you start or reignite your lettering journey. Have fun creating.